In our school system, nobody teaches us how to deal with pain, how to deal with traumatic situations. Maybe this is one of the one of the reasons. That's definitely one of the reasons. Yeah, there's there's lots of different reasons that we can look at. So yeah, we can look at kind of like on a systemic level. We can look at each individual. You know, some people have more resiliency than others. We can look at kind of modeling behavior from parents. You know, do your parents actually talk about their feelings? Do they talk about any past traumas that they've experienced? Do they talk about how they processed it? Do they encourage you to go to therapy? Do they encourage you to, to talk about what, what you're feeling and what you're going through? Or do they bottle everything up? Do they tell you that therapy isn't for us, that therapy is for crazy people? It, yeah, so there's a lot of different reasons why trauma can turn into trauma. We are here because we sense the urgency of healing, growth and change. Our goal with this company and podcast is to bring you tools and inspiration so we together can create a flourishing world both inwardly and outwardly for ourselves and generations to come. My guest today is Nancy Diaz, a nomadic therapist and the creator of GlobalCitizenTherapy.com. She specializes in working with women of color who are daughter of immigrant parents. She has a great experience with trauma victims and is passionate about helping children of immigrants with their mental health and self-development journey, no matter where they are in the world. It is a fascinating conversation about healing trauma and in the times we are living in, it was much needed. So hit that subscribe button and without further ado, Nancy Diaz. Hello ma'am, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. First of all, while researching your content and while watching a lot of your videos, I have to say listening to you in itself is therapeutic. <laughs> I'm so glad. Yeah, I try to share as much uh, content as I can, as I have time for, to just, um, yeah, get the word out about different things that you can do to take care of your mental health. I think everyone is struggling a little bit more than usual this past year. So, yeah, trying to do what I can to just get that information out there. Yeah, it can be, it can be a better time to talk about what we are going to talk about today. Today we are going to talk about, about trauma and how to heal trauma, how to deal with trauma, what is trauma if it's not clear for a lot of people that what is trauma. But before that, I wanted to know what inspired you to do the work you're doing right now? Uh, I think I've always loved helping people, but I think when the pandemic hit, that's when I really I started seeing the suffering. And yeah, just even logging into Facebook and especially yeah, I'm in communities and Facebook groups that are kind of all over the world. And I just saw that, yeah, it affected some communities more than others. And I just wanted to be able to, to help to use the skills that, that I learned in school to be able to help people, especially, I mean, as soon as the pandemic hit and people started losing their jobs and going into lockdowns, I knew that the depression rates would go up. I knew that the number of suicides would go up. And so, yeah, I just, I wanted to be able to help with that. And help in any way that I could because yeah trauma can be really heavy it can be really hard and yeah if it's not dealed with then yeah it can lead to things like depression anxiety different disorders so I wanted to do my part to see if I could hopefully bring that number down and yeah it was a it's a good choice for me I've already helped uh, quite a number of people and yeah anytime that I can help someone who's um, thinking about suicide as an option that I think is really rewarding to be able to help them so that they take that option off the table and keep living. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of suicide, uh, yesterday only I was uh, in one of the Facebook group about mental health and some guy opened about his issues going through mental health and he was basically he was asking for help and somebody there suggested him why don't you go and commit suicide and your all the all of your problems will be solved so when i read that it was very very pathetic and i asked the admin to block that person immediately 
बट दिस इज द वर्ल्ड वी लिव इन राइट नाउ दिस इज द काइंड ऑफ स्टिग्मा वी हैव क्रिएटेड अराउंड मेंटल हेल्थ लाइक पीपल आर सो मच अफ्रेड टू कम आउट एंड वेन दे कम आउट देन दे गेट टू हेयर दीज काइंड ऑफ स्टेटमेंट्स दैट वाई डोंट यू कमिट सुसाइड एंड ऑल दैट yeah it is it's really sad and i think um yeah i see these problems on facebook i see them on instagram as well um if you uh, search the hashtag depression or suicide sadly you're going to get a lot of um content that's telling you to commit suicide to um to end the depression to end it all and so that's why i think yeah i think it's important for me to create content that helps people deal with the depression to manage it better to overcome it and yeah do not yeah, choose I, i read on your website so, that it takes a lot of courage to get like get therapy to come out and go for a therapy session people don't understand that it does it takes a lot of courage to yeah yeah ask for them yeah it definitely does yeah and so i put that as a reminder anytime anyone contacts me whether by phone or by email i get a lot of people who it's their first time ever reaching out for help and so i make sure that i first um thank them for taking the time to to get the help that they need and i just acknowledge that it it must have taken a lot of courage to reach out and so yeah so hopefully you know those two little things telling them that that it takes courage and thanking them for, yeah. for reaching out and and telling them that i'm there to help them anytime that they need hopefully that you know helps break down the, a little bit more yes do you, do you have uh, a personal experience with trauma have you experienced trauma in your life yeah all kinds of different trauma i think we were talking a little bit before about how many different kinds of trauma yeah. there there can be we talked about so, childhood yeah, trauma and okay. spiritual trauma if i remember correctly yeah there's racial trauma there's uh, generational trauma there's um yeah even trauma from natural disasters there's all kinds of uh different kinds of trauma and i think that as therapists we have to really be mindful and we have to acknowledge you know when someone even when a client doesn't realize that it's trauma i think that it's important to point that out because i think that a lot of times we may experience a trauma but we may think like oh but maybe it's no big deal or maybe i'm overreacting and you just um you just kind of brush it to the side you kind of brush it under the rug and and kind of ignore it and and you don't deal with it and when you don't deal with it then it'll come back later even if it's years down the line maybe it'll show up in in your relationship or with your family or you'll all of a sudden start feeling very angry at the world or whatever it is that can show up and present in many different ways but yeah trauma i think i think that the most important thing that i want people to know about trauma is that it's something that is heavy for you it doesn't necessarily have to be heavy for anyone else and this is something that i've seen all of the time with different situations right because there could be you know like five people that are in the same car accident maybe four of those people they're fine they move on with their lives it's it's no big deal but for someone else that has become a trauma for them and maybe they're scared to get in the car again and maybe they're having flashbacks and nightmares and maybe they they develop anxiety disorder you know it, it, something like that can be developed if it's not treated and so yeah it's really important to remember that just because something some kind of situation was not traumatic for you you should never assume that it wasn't traumatic for someone else because it's the way that we kind of how hard- trauma not healed healed properly can lead to a lot of mental issues later in life right and you said all these kinds of trauma which you mentioned you said all they are all interconnected in a way so how how does how does trauma comes into being in the first place how does trauma originates first the source what how it happens well it usually happens through some kind of situation some kind of event right and so usually there will be a situation and that can lead to the trauma and so sometimes there can be a trauma that becomes a trauma because of something that happened maybe years ago 
So maybe this car accident, for example, was traumatic to this one individual because maybe when they were even five years old, they maybe watched uh, a car accident um, right in front of yeah. their eyes. You, you don't know, you know? And so sometimes we, especially when we're really young, we don't realize that it's trauma. We don't recognize it as trauma. And so that can maybe trigger another situation in the future to actually become a traumatic experience. So yeah, we're talking about how everything is just connected, everything is related. So that's kind of what we do in therapy is we kind of try to find the root cause. And so we kind of look at, okay, what are you feeling? When are you feeling this? Is it when you get into a car? Is it when you see a car accident, even on a TV show or in a movie? When are you experiencing these trauma triggers? And let's go back. When did they start? I was very much curious about how it happens because I see uh, life is full of tragedy. Something happens and sometimes very huge things happen, but they don't often turn into trauma. But why some situations turn into trauma and some don't? Like is there, what I think maybe it's a failure to process pain? Maybe. Yeah, there, there's actually a lot of different reasons why it could turn into trauma for some people and yeah, not because for nobody, um, nobody in our schools, in our school system, nobody teaches us how to deal with pain, how to deal with traumatic situations. Maybe this is one yeah, of the one of, of the reasons. That's definitely one of the reasons. Yeah, there's there's lots of different reasons that we can look at. So yeah, we can look at kind of like on a systemic level, we can look at each individual, you know, some people have more resiliency than others. We can look at kind of modeling behavior from parents. You know, do your parents actually talk about their feelings? Do they talk about any past traumas that they've experienced? Do they talk about how they processed it? Do they encourage you to go to therapy? Do they encourage you to, to talk about what, what you're feeling and what you're going through? Or do they bottle everything up? Do they tell you that therapy isn't for us, the therapy is for crazy people. It, yeah, so there's a lot of different reasons why trauma can turn into trauma. It just, um, yeah, there's so many different uh, layers to, to all of this. But yeah, part of it does have to do with, are we taught it in school? Are we taught it from our parents? Yeah, definitely. You have worked with people from all different, uh, different, different cultures. So what you have observed that how trauma basically what kind of like specific kind of trauma happens a lot like is there a, a spiritual trauma or it's childhood trauma which is very very common among people mm -hmm. yeah and um, when we talk about childhood trauma we have to remember that, that within childhood trauma, there's still different kinds of trauma. All right. So a child can experience spiritual trauma or racial trauma. Um, I gave the example of like a child experiencing racial trauma. Of course, the child is not going to know this, but it's little things like when you have to choose between a white doll and a black doll and you are told by another uh, little girl that the black doll yeah. is ugly <laughs> and that the black I doll I gave you the ugly. example of black doll. So that, <laughs> which has a huge, huge impact yeah, in India. <laughs> yeah, creating body image issues, all kinds yeah. of things. So, yeah, so those aren't maybe necessarily traumatic experiences in themselves, but they kind of lead, they're subliminal messaging. And so then those can actually act as triggers later on in our lifetime. So when we experience something else then it, it hits us a little bit harder because we've had that kind of messaging growing up since a very young age but yeah there's all kinds of um, different trauma that you can experience as a child as an adult and so yeah and I do work with people of all different cultures and it's um yeah it's hard to say yeah there is a lot of childhood trauma in some cultures I see a particular type of trauma more than others of course, within the community that I work with, which is uh, women of color who are daughters of immigrants, I do see some spiritual trauma. I definitely see generational trauma. Um, I see racial trauma as well. So those are kind of the, the big ones. And this can happen 
you know, in childhood, it can happen when they're adults. Um, and so most of the time it happens both. And so both when they're a child and, and when they have yeah. grown up. And so, yeah, it's just about breaking that, that cycle, especially when it's generational. So usually when we're talking about, okay, when did this start? What happened? And we get into family. Oh, well, my mom is an alcoholic or, you know, my dad like experienced this when he moved to this country and he experienced racism and whatever it is, there's all kinds of trauma that if you start to think about what your parents have experienced and maybe worst, what worst kind which I have mm-hmm. came across is generational trauma. It's, it's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's so cycle. hard to break the cycle and it's so hard to get comprehend ki what's happening like why it's happening because it happened to some of my ancestor and i don't know know his life story what he has been through but i can see symptoms in myself yeah so mm-hmm. can you talk a little about generational yeah, trauma we can something we can carry our yeah. ancestors trauma and so sometimes we don't realize why we're feeling so down, so sad, so heavy. Yeah. And we just, we're sometimes carrying our parents' trauma, especially when they have shared with us what they have been through, our grandparents, what they have been through. Or if we know, you know, like generations ago, like um, we experienced slavery, you know, for example. And so that's that's hard to carry. That's That's a big burden to carry. So we have to realize as well you know even something like historical trauma um can definitely affect us and so yeah it's uh, it's important to realize and to to be kind to yourself and not judge yourself when you're feeling too sad or angry or just unmotivated that can all kind of be from yeah from generational trauma from historical trauma just knowing that your ancestors have been through a lot when I when I think about trauma, two quotes come in my mind. Uh, the first one is, "Hurt people hurt people." So, and the second one is, mm. "Heal the boy, and the man will appear." So, maybe we can talk about these two. How you understand this? Like, what does it mean? Hurt people hurt mm. people. Does it mean that until we'll not heal ourselves, we'll gonna cause pain to everyone we'll come across? Yeah, unfortunately, that that's kind of why the the cycle keeps going. Because if we don't heal, then we will pass that on yeah. to our kids. We'll um, show different behaviors in our romantic relationships or toward our family members, behaviors that are not so good that we don't want to be showing things like our anger, um, different outbursts. Um, so yeah, so a lot of clients come to me usually because they have a behavior that they want to change. So some clients come to me and they say, you know, I was hurt in the past. I was in an abusive relationship, for example. And now because of that, I am, I realize that I am acting the same way that that abusive partner was acting yeah. with me. I'm showing the same behavior in my current relationship with my current partner and so yeah so it's hard and so I'm always so happy to hear you know when someone comes to therapy and they want to work on that because they they love this person you know whether it's a romantic partner or it's a family member or it's a a child um, a daughter a son that they have whatever it is they they want to change that behavior because they see and and a lot of my clients they know they say well, I think I act this way toward my partner because this is what I saw, you know, my my dad due to my this mom is. or this is how my mom treated my dad or this is how they treated us as kids. They, you know, were, were very abusive or, you know, just um, yelled at us all the time or, yeah, did all kinds of things. And so some, some realize that it comes from not having healed from that childhood trauma. And some people haven't realized it yet. And so that's kind of what I'm there for, to help them realize that it's all kind of connected. And um, yeah, I remind my clients all the time, especially when when I know that there's generational trauma, when I can hear the pain in their voice when they talk about their, their parents' behaviors, I remind them, like, you are a cycle breaker. And whether your parents want to go to therapy, whether your siblings want to go to therapy, 
it doesn't matter because you are actually breaking the cycle. And actually, I'm so proud of all my clients right now because all of them um, are, I think all except for one, one are first timers and they're, they're all daughters of immigrants and they actually have talked to their parents about being in therapy. Some of their parents are the ones paying for their therapy sessions, which is amazing. And I love that. Um, but they're sharing what they learn in our sessions with their family members, with their parents, with their siblings, with their friends. And I love that because that means that we're just spreading the knowledge and, and getting the word out about different things that you can do to take care of your mental health. So that I think it's, is amazing. It's really so amazing to that. hear that uh, because here most people most people aren't uh, even aware of like there is something called mental health yeah that's true yeah a lot of people think that that's a myth even within my own family um, my dad struggled when my sister was diagnosed with anxiety disorder um my other sister also didn't believe that anxiety was a real thing and thought that my sister was faking it um, people don't realize that this is a real thing. And so, yeah, with clients, I have to sometimes help them explain to their family members what mental health is, um, how important it is to take care of your mental health, and how it can be, um, especially mental health disorder, can be as serious as any physical health condition. So to you, uh, so, yeah. how does the process of healing, how does it look like in your mind? I think that there's all kinds of different ways that we can go about healing and it looks different for every person. And so that's why I decided that I would just um, be the kind of therapist that's open to different approaches and to different ideas. And so, yeah, so when I um, start with a new client, I usually ask them, what is it that you usually do to learn best? Is it, do you like listening to podcasts? Do you like reading books? Do you like journaling? Do you like singing? Do you like dancing? Do you like uh, painting? What is it that you like? Because all of those are can be healing, right? And so some people, they're writers and writing about their trauma will help yeah. them heal. Some people just don't like write. It, it's a struggle for them to write about what it is that they've experienced. So maybe they start something like a podcast where they share their experiences or Maybe they describe it in, in their painting or in their art. So yeah, I usually try to help clients kind of find what it is because yes, we're doing healing in our therapy sessions. But what I tell my clients is that healing has to happen outside of our weekly sessions as well. And so they need to be putting in the work to do the healing when we're not in session as well. Because usually what we talk about in a session can be pretty heavy. Yeah. And after our session, they need to do more healing, more processing. And so I make sure that my clients all have, you know, at least one favorite self-care that they do, whether it's going out for a walk or just doing some exercise or painting. One of my clients really likes baking. Um, so she's always baking whenever she's um, have, feeling very anxious. And so, yeah, whatever it is, I think all of those can be very therapeutic in their own way. So the things that I share with my clients are just what I know about um, self-care techniques that are that are good for mental health. So all of them have kind of have their own reason. Like if you like going on nature walks and you find that to be very yeah. healing and, and therapeutic, well, that's because there's more oxygen hitting your brain. And so you can think more clearly. It reduces your anxiety. It reduces your depression. So I share this with my clients and I explain to them. You know, so if you do this, these are the benefits and this is why you will feel better if you do this. So, yeah, especially for my clients who have depression and who struggle to, to get out of bed and to, and to do these things that they know will be good for them. You know, even just reminding them, like, if you do this, you'll feel better because this and this and this. So even just sharing them with them, like the science and the research studies behind each one of these self-care techniques and why they should actually be doing this and why they'll feel better when they do this. And that can be enough to motivate his clients sometimes to actually get up and try at least one of the things that I yeah. recommend. And one, one of the way to heal uh, very, very fast, I think, is to make your unconscious traumatic thing, what you have in your mind, which is unconscious, make it conscious, like to, I came across a quote to heal the pain, you have to feel the pain. So what are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I do uh, tell my clients, especially that sometimes you do, you have to sit with your feelings and all of them are valid. And you just have to remember that they're temporary and that they'll pass. And so don't try to fight them. Don't try to fight the, the sadness that you feel for missing family or for leaving home, whatever the reason is that you're feeling sad. Just sit with it and yeah, have a good cry if you need to journal about what you're feeling but definitely sit with it process it um everyone has their own way of processing for some people when they're feeling really sad they have to talk to someone about it whether it's a therapist or a friend or a family member it doesn't matter they have to talk about it and that's how they'll start to to process and feel better for some people they don't want to talk about it and that's okay you can sit in your room and have a good cry and and that helps the healing process as well but yeah i think that definitely Everyone has their own way. And I think as long as you are mindful and thinking, is this a healthy way of me to process or is it not? But sometimes I think that you do definitely have to sit with the feelings and just as long as you remind yourself, this is temporary, this is okay. It's fine that I'm feeling this way. It'll pass. But right now, you know, I'm feeling this way because this happened and that's okay that I'm feeling this way. So let me just sit with this feeling and yeah i think it reminds us that yeah. we're human we need to, we need to do a lot of accepting a lot of yeah. forgiving i think yeah, yeah. it's very very yeah. very very hard yeah. but we have to go through it anyhow if you want to heal i think yeah instead of bottling it up instead of just shoving it to the side pretending it doesn't exist and trying to force yourself to be happy that's not good either. There's a lot of um, toxic positivity, yeah. right? Where we see all of these messaging. It's even printed on t-shirts, on journals, you know, positive vibes only and good vibes only and things like this. And it's it's not helpful because, yeah, I mean, would you say that to someone whose mother had just passed away? Good vibes only? No, you wouldn't. It's totally normal to feel sad sometimes. It's totally normal yeah. to feel angry at the world. And we have to just sit with it and just, know that it's yeah for a moment way. it feels like suppressing that anger suppressing that feeling like it feels like it's going away but as you mentioned earlier it's not going away until we'll face it until we'll heal it it's one it's gonna come back and haunt us again and again and again, and again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah exactly yeah so are there some books some movies or some documentaries which have impacted your life a lot um i think yeah there's two books that i really like and they have kind of helped me become a better therapist and one of them has helped me understand trauma a bit better um the other one has helped me understand um relationships a bit better and uh, attachment styles and so I do recommend those very often to my clients and even to friends one of them is called the body keeps the score and it's about trauma it's a lot about childhood trauma so yeah I think it really helps you kind of process everything that's happened why it's happened and so that's a good one Um, the other one is just called attached and yeah, it talks about attachment styles. And so you can use it as it relates to your romantic relationships. And you can also use it to your relationships with family members or with friends and, you know, to help you kind of understand what, which uh, attachment style you have, whether it's secure or anxious or avoidant or a combination. And yeah, kind of understand why it is, where it comes from. And uh, the attachment styles actually start, you know, when we were babies so yeah all of those have kind of helped me be able to help my clients the ones who are having trouble with their relationships um, or even relationships with family members anything like that and the body keeps a score has definitely helped me with clients who have trauma it's helped me understand my own trauma a bit better so yeah those I think have definitely shaped me Um, but yeah I'm always learning I think um yeah, as a therapist, we have to always be reading, listening, watching, and, and learning. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of different ways that we can help our clients out there. So, yeah, I do like listening to podcasts. So, 
probably do that more than than reading books recently just because i have more time to listen to podcasts than, than to read yeah, because um, what, because yeah, what you are things. doing i think you need like a huge understanding of the world because you can you come across all sorts of people yeah yeah and i think the other tool that i have that really helps me with my clients is that i love talking to people i love talking to people especially in different countries um especially other therapists and yeah see what techniques they're using with their clients and what they learned in school especially if they studied in a different country um especially you know some therapists work with a population that maybe i haven't worked with before so asking questions and saying like what kind of issues are you seeing in this population how can we help them and yeah i think because um i actually uh studied more on a macro level so i'm always thinking about how can we help people on a larger scale and so that's kind of why i love talking to people especially in different countries that's why a lot of clients uh, that i have are from all over the world in different countries even in tiny islands where they have no therapists um so it's always really nice to be able to to help people from different cultures and but yeah it does take a lot of uh, a lot of learning and so i know that luckily I, I, I consider myself a lifelong learner <laughs> we're not yeah i love learning i love listening to different podcasts reading different books talking to different people seeing what i can learn from them so yeah it's a it's a process but i like it some final words you would like to share with our audience or maybe um, a favorite quote i would just, favorite quote i think um one of my favorites because a lot of my clients are travelers is uh the only zen that you will uh find is within you it's not at the top of the mountain and so i think that a lot of uh people try to kind of run from their problems right and so a lot of people will will travel or they they'll take on a, a job that maybe they want to get to the top and become you know whatever manager ceo however far they want to go they try to distract themselves by going further and further climbing this mountain right and they they think that success that everything that happiness is at the top that that money everything will be better once they get to the top and they don't realize that it's within them that they'll find that happiness that they'll start to feel more fulfilled if they just look within if they process any past trauma if they learn how to manage any anxiety if they learn how to overcome depression yeah. if they just learn how to take care of their their mental health and actually prioritize their well-being that's when they can actually achieve that that zen and that happiness that fulfillment that they're looking for so instead of just chasing the next big thing and trying to distract ourselves by climbing to the top of the mountain we should just take it step by step slow down and just look within i think the pandemic really taught us all that you know that absolutely our jobs without and the I daily don't want we have i don't want more now. lessons from the pandemic i want it to end <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think we all do yeah i think we're we're done learning from the pandemic <laughs> That's why this this conversation mm-hmm. was much needed, and thank you, thank you so, thank, thank you, you so much for coming on the show. And where can we direct people who are interested in knowing more about you and your work? Uh, it's pretty easy to find me. Um, my website is www. global citizen therapy. com, and you can find me on social media. Pretty much all social media under the same handle at global citizen therapy. I'm on Instagram and. Facebook and YouTube and uh, I also have my own podcast called Global Citizen Therapy Podcast. So easy to find me as long as you remember Global Citizen Therapy. Yeah. So yeah, if anyone has any questions or wants to reach out, definitely you can find me there. All right, thank you. And come back later and talk thank to me more sometime. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Looking forward to it. Bye-bye. Thanks.